Hi, I'm Hugo Cole, and I use my big antique collection of hand engraved hubs, dies, and rolls to manufacture jewelry. You see I have these large wooden shelves here that have these things displayed on. The reason why I put them out here is so I can walk through here and see them. They inspire me. I'm working on a project. I can find what I'm looking for easily, and people like to come see them. They're separated on these shelves into broad categories. These pieces on this row right here were originally designed to be cufflinks. We use them to make rings. These things are military insignia. Down here are T-shanks, and they're what we use to make these filigree rings that people is what people mostly know us for. We also have some religious material down here. There's all kinds of animals and plants and flora. Over here are some more esoteric things. Like these down on this bottom row are baby pens that people used to use to um, hold their bibs on their baby. These are lockets and watch cases. These are uh, filigree pens. This is one of my favorite categories are these signet rings. Here are diamond bar pens. These over here are fairly esoteric thing. Um, watch pens where women used to wear on a heavier piece of fabric, you know, on a blouse or a jacket and hang a pocket watch from. This represents a technology that stopped being used in the 1940s when casting investment became a uniform product that could be bought and worked well. Um, casting investment meant you could manufacture more jewelry with a less labor intensive process and therefore cut a whole bunch of cost out of it. And so that's why that technology replaced this technology. However, one of the things that's lost with um, the newer process is you don't get the great incredible detail and craftsmanship from casting that you can get from this. All these pieces here were hand engraved and so somebody started with a block of steel here and a hammer and some small chisels and literally cut all these patterns into these blocks and this piece right here is a tremendous example of one of the more difficult ones as well as this. And so this still blows me away thinking about somebody working probably standing up underneath a south facing window with a ham and a chisel cutting this by hand. People don't do that kind of work anymore. People can't do that kind of work anymore. I think probably there's only a handful of people that do this that work for a mint. Over here on this wall are the rolls that I use. These smaller ones right here to make wedding bands, these larger ones right here to make bands and bracelets, and these um, bars right here that we've already filmed something about that were used by a company in this country to make wedding bands sometime right before the Civil War. This collection, as far as I know, is probably the biggest one in one place anymore. Um, the first group of these I found actually being thrown away and I gathered them up and it took me a couple years to learn what they were and how they were used and ever since then I've become a voracious collector of these things. It's become something of an obsession. If you like this kind of thing and want to see individualized pictures of all of this stuff go to my website filigreerings.com and there's a library of all of them right there for you to look at.